In part one of this video, we saw how by applying tables, we got all kinds of wonderful functionality with just a few clicks. It included flexible formatting, the ability to sort and filter quickly and easily, as well as add a total row that allows us to create quick calculations. We also worked a little bit with how to separate names using text functions. For our data, the first and last name were in the same column, and we used three separate functions, all kind of nested together, in order to separate out the first name and put it into proper case. We used those text functions to show the power of text functions, but in later versions of Excel, we now have a simpler option if all we need to do is split text fields into separate columns. In order to do this, we first need to make space, so we'll right-click on column C and choose Insert. We'll then select all of the cells that we want to separate, which in this case would be A2 through A6. The tool that we need is found on the Data tab. We'll activate the Data tab, move over to the Data Tools group, and choose the Text to Columns feature. This brings up a wizard that's going to take us through the steps required to separate our text. Text basically comes in two different formats. One is known as Fixed Width, where every column is, just as it sounds like, a fixed width. The more common method, I think, for most of us is something called delimited text. This means that there's something within the cell that's going to tell Excel where to separate it. It could be a comma, it could be a tab stop. In our case, it's a space. So we'll leave it at delimited text, and on the bottom right corner of the window, click or tap next. This is where we actually get to determine what the delimiter is. Notice it could be a tab, a semicolon, a comma, or, as is our case, space. So we want to make sure that space is checked and nothing else is. Fortunately, it gives us a nice preview on the bottom of the screen. If this doesn't look right after you make your selections, then you need to make a different selection. Ours looks just perfect. So we'll again move down to the Next button and give it a click. The last step of the wizard allows us to designate specific types of data. Now, this isn't critical. In our case, general would work just fine. But remember, if you don't designate something as text and it has leading zeros, those zeros will be stripped off if it's left in the general format. That can be really bad for things like check numbers or invoices that start with zeros. Both of our columns should be text, so we'll go ahead and select the first one, designate text, and then select the second column and designate it as text as well. Naturally, if they included dates, we would want to designate those so they could be formatted appropriately as well. Well, that's the last step, so all we need to do is move to the bottom right corner and click or tap Finish. Now, because we already had some functions in our B column, it's asking us if it's OK to overwrite it, and we're going to click OK to say yes, it is. This is where we get to see the results, and we notice a couple of things. First of all, we didn't need to have two columns. The wizard actually utilizes the original column for one of the columns it needs. That's not a big deal. We can simply delete the extra column. The second thing we notice is that the text to columns certainly does a good job of separating things, but it doesn't take care of the case. So if we needed to put it into proper case, we would need to go ahead and do that using a function. We'll do just a little bit of that cleanup by right-clicking on the C column and deleting it. Now, as we continue to look at our data, what we notice is that a couple of our fields are just very difficult to read because they're not formatted correctly. For example, the C column contains what should be a social security number. We could again retype it, or we could simply use something known as Excel's special formats. By selecting the cells, right-clicking, choosing Format Cells, and then from the first tab, which is the Number tab, choosing Special, which is the next to the last entry, we'll see that we actually have several special formats that can easily be applied. Social security number is one of those, so we'll select that, and click OK at the bottom of the window. That easily, the dashes that split the 3, dash 2, dash 4 are instantly applied. That's a whole lot faster than having to type them on your own, and we don't have any typographical errors. Zip codes and phone numbers are other perfect types of contact information that work very well with special formats. Now, if you're a person who works regularly in human resources, or especially if you work with medical information and are familiar with HIPAA requirements, you may very well realize that having social security numbers visible is not a good thing. Don't forget that it's very easy to hide entire columns of data by simply selecting them, right-clicking, and choosing Hide. 
This gets it out of the way, but it's really not secure. In order to secure it, we would need to password protect the worksheet. As we continue to review our information, we notice that we also have a field for hire date. This particular value is used in so many different ways in business. But we also know that there's another important date that our business uses. In our company, five years is important. We acknowledge it with a special bonus, and many benefits also increase at that point in time. They don't do so until the end of the month of their fifth year. In other words, someone hired on the 3rd of March in a given year receives the bonus and new benefits at the same time someone hired on the 29th of March does. We'd like to be able to see what each employee's five-year anniversary date is, but we want all of those dates to use the end of that month. So we're going to use something called the end of month function to do so. Let's go ahead and make some room by inserting a column between F and G. We'll then click on G2 and start creating our function with the equal sign, followed by EO month, which is the function name for end of month. This function, like many of the others we've used, have only two arguments, what the start date is and the number of months that we want to do the calculation from. Our date is actually in cell F2. We'll either type or click on F2, put a comma, and for our last argument, the magic number is 60. We said five years, but five years equates to 60 months. A single closing parenthesis, and we'll press enter, and we now have our calculation. Notice that every single one of these dates does the five-year calculation, but then it shows the last day of the month. For March, that would be the 31st. For September, it would be the 30th. For April, the 30th. For July, the 31st, and so forth. Naturally, we could apply any number of different date formats if we really didn't want to see the day of the month, for example. Those are simply done through the date category in the Format Cells dialog. The end of month function, though, can be very useful for many business needs, including calculating due dates or payment dates that we prefer to always fall at the end of the month instead of somewhere in the middle. Now, we would probably want to do a little bit of cleanup, like renaming that column one and column two, as well as applying some more formatting. But the employee list certainly looks a lot different than it did just a few minutes ago. We actually utilized several Excel features to accomplish our goals. We leverage the power of tables to apply quick, flexible formatting. It allows us to do easy sorting and filtering and provides a total row. It also automated formulas, so when we created them, they automatically filled down because if one record needs them, then obviously all of the records need them in a consistent table. We used a couple of traditional text and date functions, as well as the newer text to columns feature to manipulate data without having to do so the long, tedious manual way, which usually means typing. We also use special formats that are built into Excel to enhance the data and make it easier to read. These are only examples of what these tools are able to do, and you probably won't use all of them at one time. But knowing the breadth of options that are available to you helps automate managing contact information, and really information of any type, and saves a tremendous amount of time. It creates consistency, and it enables you to move quickly on to other business-related tasks.